okay? Every single function in the body has to do with the neurotransmitters and the hormones that are in your body. That's why we are here as human beings having a human, human experience, okay? Human, hue, light, man, manifest. You are light, love and light being manifest in the physical form, experiencing duality, okay? But how we experience that is with feelings. And how do we feel feelings? Hormones and neurotransmitters, okay? That's what makes us feel things, okay? Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that transmit signals from neurons across a synapse to another target neuron, a muscle cell, or a gland, okay? A neuron is just a nerve cell, yeah. and the synapse is kind of the space in between. Yeah, the space between two nerve cells, right? So if you so think sending of, a signal from one to the yeah, other. Yeah, you can... Like when I jump in and say "Welcome back," or do you like when I say "The Bridge Podcast"? Hmm, I don't know. Is there a third option? Welcome back to The Bridge Podcast. Ah, I'm your host, Sean Nixon, Jonathan Matthew. How the fuck are you feeling today? On the scale of one to titties, one to titties. Hmm, it's a big scale. How many the titties? Is big. See, that's the thing about titties. You can't go wrong. This is Big, true. This small, is true. there's no wrong answer. <laughs> there's preferences for different for sure, people for like sure. different things at different <laughs> times. But you can't just have one. for all our people who are not about titties, though? Are you a titty guy? Or of course. Guy? Like both. But that's the Preach thing. everything. That's the thing. Don't make me pick one. <laughs> I love it all. You like dogs, you like cats, Sean. You got to pick one. I just want to grab them and hold them and snuggle them <laughs> and release my you know, oxytocin. I always like seeing the videos of like, um, like uh, people who get puppies but have like older cats. And the cats are first like this fucking piece of shit and like a day later they're like cuddling with it yeah <laughs> dude, cats are so funny man cats are hilarious cats got their own cat because cat knows he's like all right this motherfucker's gonna be bigger than me but i'm gonna be more clever i forget who was saying like like um like being more like like the difference between cats and dogs like cats will just they're they're not like as full of shit as dogs are like dogs will like will be full of shit to make you happy yeah. but cats are like i don't give a shit about what you think like they don't get hair like but like doesn't mean they're mean. They just no. like they're just telling how it is. They're you know, them how they're it just is. keeping it straight up with you. Oh <laughs> if you don't god. like it, and the dog's like, you leave for ten minutes and you so come yeah. back. Dog's like, oh my god, I'm so happy yeah. to see you. And the I brought like, you this newspaper. Cat's like, you're a moron. You're just gone for ten minutes. <laughs> yeah, I'm alone. This is fucking fine. So today we're gonna be breaking down neurotransmitters. They're super important. If you don't think you they are. You're going to find out why today, okay? Every single function in the body has to do with the neurotransmitters and the hormones that are in your body. That's why we are here as human beings having a human, human experience, okay? Human, hue, light, man, manifest. You are light, love and light being manifest in the physical form, experiencing duality, okay? But how we experience that is with feelings. And how do we feel feelings? Hormones and neurotransmitters, okay? That's what makes us feel things, okay? Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that transmit signals from neurons across a synapse to another target neuron, a muscle cell, or a gland, okay? A neuron is just a nerve cell, yeah. and the synapse is kind of the space in between. Yeah, the space between two nerve cells, right? So if you so think- So sending of, a signal from one to the yeah, other. Yeah, you can, it's- you can kind of imagine them like there's just like this kind of like this gap between two like joints almost. Yeah. And it's that space where things get transmitted, right? So the messengers, neurotransmitters are those things that go back and forth. Throwing them and down. catching them. Yeah, it's like your neighbor across the street just playing catch back and playing forth. Playing catch. You know, with, a, with, a, with a ball and a glove. And, and the neurons beautiful. too, just touch on real quickly. Yeah. You know, we talk about like everything's energy, right? Well, this is this is it in the body. <laughs> you don't think of your body as electrical, but that's all that I'm sure do. is happening. Well, you do, right? But like you don't think about electric charges. Signals. But yeah, neurons are just electrical signals, impulses that travel through a gazillion, however many per second, all throughout your body. Yeah. Um, and beautiful. You know. So that's your sensory response to external stimulus. 
Okay, and when something happens, neurotransmitters and hormones are secreting in your body, yep. helping you do things and feel things. All right, so let's get it kicked off. We're gonna th there's hundreds of neurotransmitters. There's like a big four. We're gonna talk about the main seven because seven is a magical number. Ooh, and dude, I forgot to tell you right before we go on. And this is totally uh -oh. off topic. Ah. I wanted to show you. <laughs> Dr. Campbell just dropped the seven ways to heal. I think he knows about the sevens, <laughs> but that's a hell of so a... Seven's just like a nice number, though, It's too. nice, it's nice, nice. There's, but there's a reasons why. Nice. I was going to say, I don't believe in coincidences, so I'm sure something's going on there, but I can't wait to watch that one. Um, <laughs> so we're going to kick it off with epinephrine, okay? Epinephrine is your adrenaline, okay? This is made in the adrenal glands, which are right like above and behind the kidneys, and that's going to stimulate your fight-flight response, okay? It's going to increase heart rate, blood pressure... Pump up your nervous system to oxygenate muscles to get you moving and going yeah. and rocking and rolling, okay? It sharpens your decision-making skills. And that's, you know, where the adrenaline junkies are getting high. Ah, uh, junkies. Yeah, that's the thing. So your roller coasters, your uh, skydiving, your BMXing, your flipping your BMX. off of bikes and ah, shit. Bungee jumping. Get, ah, getting no into a, Getting into a fight. Playing some, fight. playing some contact sports, Starting there's going to be some yeah. adrenaline, and it feels good. feels real good. If you have low epinephrine, you're going to have brain fog, lack of focus, your mood's going to be low, aches and pains, lower heart rate, lower blood pressure. So you can you can supplement with stimulants, caffeine being one, could be any, any stimulant drug. Yeah. Or it's just basically the arousal to a fear response. So whether you got caffeine in the system or not, if you get into a fight or there's a danger situation going on, yeah. the body's like, we either are going to have to fight this motherfucker. Yeah, like if you like roll, if you run like, away. Yeah, if you like getting a fight or you like roller coasters and stuff like that, it's like that. It's the waiting to get on is what is where you feel. It's like I'm afraid to get on, but this tick, is what's tick, getting me tick, going, tick, right? Tick, the going tick, up tick, on it, tick. right? Like, uh, you're and like smiling, but you're scared, but like you know. Which is why, just for example, I hate roller coasters. I love them, and you love them. <laughs> and I went skydiving once, and I absolutely hated it. I probably go multiple times. Funny, fuck, <laughs> funny fucking story, which I might as well tell. But um, the thing is, since I'm a fire type, and because all these are going to relate back to the Chinese elements that we talked about, as far as uh, your your Earth type's going to have a lot of acetylcholine. Your fire type's going to have a lot of uh, dopamine and epinephrine. Um, water type's going to have a lot of GABA, where they're chilled out a little bit. And this will, we'll explain it as we go. But um, basically, I'm already fired up all the fucking time. <laughs> so too much extra <laughs> fire up, especially when I feel like I don't have control of it, mm. uh, is too much. It's too much for me. Lack of control of the fire. That's yeah, that's a, that's a forest that's fire. A, that's a wildfire. Wildfire. Smokey Wait, the bear is dude. turning his little wheel. <laughs> dude, only you can prevent only you. your own forest fire within your heart. Because <laughs> last time I went on a roller coaster, it was not a good time. I was like, what the fuck? This is terrible. And everybody's like, oh my god, that was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> but the one time I went skydiving, we're in this little shitty fucking tiny plane, which is the most terrifying part to get up there. <laughs> and it's all, uh, it's three ex um, Air Force guys, oh. right? This is like their side job after they retire from the yeah. military. And uh, they're little guys and they're like, they're like laughing and shit because they're fucking psychos that have done thousands yeah. of jumps in fucking Iraq and shit. And um, we're going up, we're going up, and it's a little fucking plane, and it stalls. So now we're, like, fluttering in the air going down, and the guy's, like, laughing and shit. And uh, king, 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 starts it back up, and we keep going. I'm fucking terrified, right? But I'm, like, twice the size of the guy. So when he opens the door, he's like, you got to go first. Oh, because Yelling you, at me, because yeah. the bigger guy has to lead, because he's strapped. To, um, we're strapped to each other's backs. Yeah. So he's like... Put your foot out and roll out, but don't hit your head on the wing. Oh, don't say that. I'm like, bro, <laughs> I'm that. not a fucking expert here. He's like, how do I do that? How do I do that? <laughs> and as soon as you just put your foot out, you just get sucked out. I imagine. <laughs> and it's, I forget, 10, 15, 20 seconds, maybe 30 seconds of free fall feels like half a sucking second. Half a second goes by, and I'm literally feeling like I'm dead, and not dead in a good way, like smoking DMT, yeah. like gone dead, screaming for my mommy, dead. <laughs> ah, Wait, screaming you, like you, a little girl. I, mean, I doubt you knew. Like when you rolled, like looking back, was there any way that you would have hit your head on the? the it was right there. <laughs> I fucking just that fast think, though? fucking. What if he hit his head? Yeah. I didn't know how to pull the shoe. Oh my god. <laughs> Where'd what? you find these guys, dude? <laughs> 
it's just shady shit that so, I did in my that's early an 20s. A sign on the side of a road. Dude, the things I did in my early 20s. We don't have enough time on this show. That's a whole It's it's a it's a what not series. to do, right? It's a, no, it's a forever series of what not to do. Okay? But that's why we're here now. Then I'm screaming, ah, and he fucking pulls the chute, and I'm like, oh, my God, I'm going to puke. I'm going to die. And he's like, look, you can see New York City. You can see this. Oh, there's your house there. I'm like, I don't give a fuck. Put us down. Let us go down. He's like, this is the, the, the where you enjoy it. And he hands part. me, like, the, the the rudders to fucking spin around. Yeah. He's like, oh, Atlantic City's over there. Where were you landing? Billy's over there. It was in Monmouth County, um, Homedale okay. uh, Airstrip. And... Um, that was the next thing. He didn't really go over the landing. You got to kind of just like run yourself into the ground and keep, <laughs> keep running like Fred Flintstone and shit. But, um, gabba, gabba, do. Yeah, that was the thing. And I'm like, I'm not enjoying this whatsoever. And everyone else is like, this is the greatest thing ever. Because thinking back on it, there are, there was a bunch of like water types, so to speak, yeah. where they were chill. Super chill. Super chill. This gets them a little... Yeah, it gets them a little woo. I wake up in the morning Ooh. fucking woo! <laughs> and I'm... I'm on fire all yeah, day. Yeah, he's pop the sprinkler system for you. That's you need, the right? thing. He's sizzling that down. My, where I get my jollies off is laying on the beach, mm. meditation, yoga, being in the water. That's what gets you into balance, and right? The balance, because that's what all this shit is about. Not being out of balance. Not that dopamine's good, dopamine's bad, fire is good, water is bad, none of that. It's fucking balance of what yeah, your well, chemical makeup endogenously, genetically. Yeah. Playing with the elements because yeah. that's just what we're here for. How does your brain, your nervous system, and your glands and your chakra system interact with the elements on earth? That's yeah. the game that we're playing here. And then we're here to just learn lessons on our soul's journey and fulfill our karmic debt and learn things and have I'll, I like to throw in and have fun. And have fun while you're doing it. It's not in the rules. It's not in the Akashic Records that you have to have, have fun. fun. But I recommend it. Well, why not? You're here anyway. What are you going to fucking have a bad time? Yeah, it's like when you go to like a, it's like when you go to a, like a party and like instead of enjoying it, you're just like pouty because you right, want to stay home. It's like, right, right. Like and you're sitting in the corner pouting you with your little your red cup. No, <laughs> live life, enjoy, yourself. have a good time. But that's the thing, balance in all things. Yeah, and then like that's how neurotransmitters essentially work, right? In the synapses, we talk about. We'll get this with serotonin. I'll talk to on a little bit, but. Things just don't get like it doesn't get just get released, and your body's like, okay, we're just gonna keep going now. Like there's there's signals within your body, feedback loops that stop it from being released, stop being uptake and, and all that. Or that's why SSRIs are selective serotonin reuptake inhibitors, right? So, um, which we'll get to that. Um, but it's all about balance, balancing those chemicals. So it's the same thing we talk about junkie, like right? so adrenaline junkie. Essentially, what we're saying is, I need that adrenaline response to feel alive, right? And yeah, that can happen with a lot of these. Yeah, you ever um, see uh, what's the dude that does the free climbing and shit? Alex Honnold and shit. Just like he's straight up. so chill, it's ridiculous. So he needs to put his life on the line to feel things. Ooh, Oof. yeah. Solo climbing, higher shit than professionals can do in a group setting Ooh, with a belay and ropes and gear. And he's just going. Next level human beings. Next level. There's some mutants out there. Mutants. Just so you know. Okay. So next up, we got glutamate. Glutamate is a neurotransmitter, but it's also an amino acid. Okay. So you get it from the protein that you eat. It's important because it's in 90% of the synapses in the central nervous system. All right. So the, the reason why glutamate is a big deal is that it, neuroplasticity relies on glutamate to build pathways, okay, between the neurons for memory and learning, okay? So neuroplasticity is how you learn new things and regain long-term memory even from things you forgot or thought yeah. you couldn't learn or you're too old to learn and you can't teach a old dog new, new tricks. tricks and all this shit. But with ne the science of neuroplasticity, yes, you can actually. It's just repetitions yeah. and the right time and conditions. And most importantly, diet. You know what I'm saying? Like when you have a big test in school and they say you need a brain boost brain food. breakfast. And then they give you fucking oatmeal and pancakes and cereal and orange juice. And it's just carbs and carbs and carbs. 200 grams of carbs. And it's just insulin through the roof. <laughs> and then you fucking crash and you're tired. But what about some healthy fats and some proteins to stimulate neuroplasticity? Eggs, some avocado, a little bacon. Come on. Maybe you have like a grapefruit or something there. Come on, little fruit. Dude, fruit is magical. Can we talk about this, this morning, my, my morning walk meditation? Sometimes it's like super profound. How does this relate to fruit? Well, I'm going to get to that. The, <laughs> the, uh, there was like a super profound thing. Yeah. And then um, and then I was just like, fruit is magical. 
<laughs> Fruit's good, you see. Fruit's fucking amazing. Because I'm eating a strawberry, and it's so damn juicy and delicious. And I'm like, first of all, there's no mm. karma whatsoever. Like, I buy the most sustainably ethically raised meat that I can and wild caught fish and I'm not involved in any um, harm of animals because I no understand voting with my dollar not only for the environment, the animal's karma and my gut health yeah. and my health in general uh, relies on the quality of the food and how it's grown and raised, right? So I only buy like organic, grass fed, cage free, wild caught, sustainably raised, whatever. Um, but here's the thing, even if you only eat plants, and you're a plant-based vegan warrior. You're, you're eating the plant. The plant is a living thing, and you're yeah. eating. Fruit is there for the tree. Is there gives it to you. There you go. It's for us. <laughs> you don't damage the tree whatsoever. <laughs> Fruit is karma free. It's meant it's to be there for food. you. To eat. It's fucking beautiful, man. Fruit is magical. That's great. So and the other thing I was thinking was, um, this analogy <laughs> of like consciousness being like a hot air balloon. I thought you were going to say, like, being like fruit. <laughs> no, no. Like, some, uh, we invested in some fruit company. Fruit company. <laughs> yeah. Apple or something. Apple or something. And uh, we ain't got to worry about money no more. No more. That's good. One last thing. <laughs> um, so I was thinking, like, consciousness is like a hot air balloon, right? Mm -hmm. But you got the rope that fucking ties it down, and you got the sandbags, and that's all your judgment and your fear and all your fucking trauma that you're holding on to. So when you learn how to untie those knots and let things go and dump the sandbags off, your consciousness expands and rises a little bit, right? Mm -hmm. But your other tools of consciousness expansion, be it exercise, reading, learning, helping people, uh, charity, giving back, plant medicines, meditation, breath work, whatever. That's the fire <laughs> that raises consciousness mm. even more. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So the higher vibrations You've we get. You've been on a higher balloon? No, fuck that. <laughs> that's, that's, fuck that. Fuck that that's shit, it. dude. Maybe that's what your mind was that's saying. That's too scary for me. Right. Uh -huh. That's how we got here. That's how we got here. Because I'm just I'm just out in that quantum field putting things out there. Because that was too scary. <laughs> but that's the next thing. You're not going to be able to go as high if you're weighed down by fear. So you just start Here's throwing sandbag. those sandbags off and untying those ropes. Forgiveness, letting go, acceptance, and all these spiritual practices. Gratitude. Your baggage. Literally. Baggage. Literally Get baggage. rid of that shit. It's not serving you. <laughs> Gratitude. <laughs> Fucking going up to the top, baby. Yeah, like in how many movies, and this is done on purpose, right, where like the hero is being chased or something, and he... Needs to go faster, but he can't go faster because he's holding the shit, some shit. And the other guy's like, "You just, just let it go." And he's like, "I can't let it go." I can't. And you have to let it go. And he cries and sad, but he realizes he had to. But then it's better, and then it saved his life. Or like in uh, Inside Out, right? Oh, such a good Bing Bong, whatever his name is. Yeah. How they get out of the canyon is they go, and he just like, I'll, I'll, he stays behind so she can rock it up. The oh, back. that's right. He but he go. knew. Yeah. He, that's next he level. Knew. She wasn't going to let him right. go, so he pretended like he was going. If you haven't seen Inside Out, you're messing up, which is hilarious because it's hormones Brains and neurotransmitters. <laughs> Come on, guy. Come on. That's why you're not the best in the business for nothing. Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> the best in the business for nothing, all right? Mm. So. Eggs. They're delicious for breakfast. They have choline in them. Choline is like a precursor to acetylcholine, right? Yep. So, yeah, choline is really, really important in um, a lot of things, for one. But, like, in, in terms of talk, – let's talk about babies for a second and brain development. So, folate and choline – folate you can get from dark leafy greens, vegetables, stuff like that. They both play a really important role in – um, the development of the brain and also like the development of the spine. So if you think of like Ooh. spina bifida and stuff like that, yeah. which is essentially like the unformed or unfinished fusion of the spine. Um, so babies end up kind of having a little hole at the back of their spine, the bottom of their spine. That's from folate deficiency, folate and choline are inter interconnected. If you have like low acetylcholine, um, then, you know, choline actually stimulates the creation and the not propulsion, but just like the, yeah, the movement. Uh, the movement of acetylcholine. Um, so you can get the yeah, eggs, nuts, some types of fish. Um, conversely, you can also get folate, too, that don't directly cross. But both those things are really important um, to increase acetylcholine function, right? Or so acetylcholine. healthy, complete proteins and some vegetables. It's there beautiful, but I'm skipping ahead there. Yeah. So let's get back on track. The next one, GABA, okay? GABA reduces central nervous system activity okay without it your brain will be on all the time that's why uh, a lot of us with a low GABA in the team no sleep and whatnot um you know who you are team no <laughs> sleep not that that's recommended but point is you have low GABA so you're not 
getting that restful sleep, or at least it's harder to fall asleep, okay? Because GABA will give you the calming effect that slows down heart rate and blood pressure, allows you to relax and sleep, all right? So you can supplement with GABA directly, but once again, playing with neurotransmitters is not always the yeah. the smartest way to go. I'd rather get it through uh, exercise and diet and whatnot. But here's the thing. You can do breathing exercises, long, deep ex uh, inhales, slow, forceful exhales to stimulate GABA. Um, and more importantly, avoiding blue light before bed. That's going to help increase GABA and melatonin. Yeah. The two things are going to help you get all sleepy and get some nice, yeah, like said, restful sleep. All these are just respond to external stimulus. That's it. So this external stimulus at an inappropriate time. No good. Change your brain, bro. Fucks you all up. So that's just going to help circadian rhythms of rest and digest and sleep at night where you want melatonin, the hormone melatonin, the neurotransmitter GABA to get to sleep. And in the morning, you're going to want a little bit of epinephrine and certainly serotonin, which we'll get to, uh, to wake up and have a good day. So next is acetylcholine, which we touched on the different cholines a moment ago because we were talking about diet. Acetylcholine is the point where the nervous system and the muscle meet. Okay, so this is direct neurotransmit. This is this has nothing to, not nothing to do with the brain, but point being is from nervous system to muscle. Is yeah, neurotransmitters here. can go to muscle other cell. nerves. They can go to other cells or muscle cells or this glands. This is going this directly is to a muscle cell. All right, so any muscle movement is a function of acetylcholine. You take acetylcholine. So this this is another reason why it's not just protein makes you big and bulky and builds muscle. To actually move the muscle, you're going to yeah. need water, electrolytes, and acetylcholine as a neurotransmitter to move the muscle, all right? Because these things are moving the nervous system. Yeah, when, they, when you hear like slow twitch, fast twitch, like that just twitch response mm. has a lot to do with, or acetylcholine has a lot to do with that twitch response in the nerve. Once right? again, so that would be different um, as far as the Chinese element types. If you're, you're going to have, you're going to need more acetylcholine if you're more of a fire type to be a little bit more fast twitchy. Yeah. You can get away with lower levels of acetylcholine if you're earth water type of guy yeah. or gal. Yeah. Um, not that you don't need some, but the point is you're not as fast twitchy type 2 sprinting, jumping, explosive running, explosive power, heavy lifting. Yeah. Right. If you're more yoga swimming marathon distance, running yeah. right longer distance stuff you don't need as much as quick as quickly all right next oxytocin okay everybody knows oxytocin as the love hormone cuddling huggling, hu hugging huggling huggling is <laughs> hugging cuddling and snuggling all in once everybody Ooh. likes a good huggle huggle nice that's i think it's a new product idea yeah I'll talk to you about later huggles yeah well Watch, a lot of out, watch out, and merch coming. Watch out, Snuggie. <laughs> the the ugly is coming the for you. Right? <laughs> so oxytocin is made in the pituitary gland. Okay, the hypothalamus is pushing it out to the body when we're, like I said, hanging out with friends, being with people that we love, hugging people, cuddling people. When you see your grandma, when you see a baby, when you see a puppy, Little and you're puppy. like, oh my god, I love this puppy. I don't even know this puppy. I love this baby. I don't even know this baby. Yeah, it's. Oxytocin is making you feel that way. And it feels nice. It's, nice. it's cute. This is why I love babies huggle. and puppies. Because yeah. you want to huggle them and uh, make you feel nice. Make you feel good. And that's, and honestly, so uh, you think of it more as like a feminine neurotransmitter because. You think of the baby and the mother yeah, breastfeeding and that connection there. Right? And that so. connection. And that's huge because um, oxytocin is stimulated when there's contractions before um, childbirth. And then there's a big flood of it. Uh, when the when the doctor or whomever um, delivers the baby hands to the mother, so they make that connection, and that's oh my god, I'm so in love. I didn't know I could be yeah. this in love. Um, and it's also stimulated during breastfeeding, so there's like an oxytocin serotonin uh, exchange right there between mother and baby, and that's why that bond is so important. But for men, at least let's just talk about human men, it's super important because that's what's going to make you want to stay with the mother or the child or not. Yeah. And actually love and take care of the baby or not. And create sure, that connection. Can they create that connection. Obviously, there's external factors that will make you want to do that or not want to do that. But point being is you're not like a deer or a lion that's just banging and then going to somebody, her cousin, and moving going on. Going to the pride, run through the woods. Right, and that's fine. That's and different fine. animals do different things. And not that you couldn't be... Um, polygamous or anything as a human being like right as a human being because we're such advanced uh, social creatures like that but point being is that is the hormone that's like oh i don't even like kids but i love my kids so fucking much yeah. 
And like I said, I don't even have kids, but that's why I like animals and babies so much, because I can see that they're pure, innocent souls. Um, and the oxytocin feels good. That's why I'm a hugger, too. You know? I'm not... Um, Huggle. Huggle. It's coming, coming, <laughs> coming to the store near you. You know when you go to a party or something and everybody's kissing everybody on the face and kissing cheeks and shit like that? Yeah. I'm not about that. You're not about that? Dude, like, I don't know. Like, <laughs> get out of my face. I'm not going to kiss somebody's wife on the fucking mouth and shit. That's, I forget. I was watching, it's from some old sitcom. But I want to hug everybody. From old sitcom, but like some like someone's aunt is like the, the, the mouth. Oh, like the face, and then you got lipstick kisser. on your face. <laughs> and you're like, lady, you smell like fucking rose petals over here. You're killing me. And everybody wants to fucking pinch mm. your cheeks and, and the double side thing. Uh. Why I come from, you get a hug. Just give me a warm embrace. Hugs are great. Huggles are great because Huge. if you hold it for a certain amount of seconds, I don't exactly remember the amount. Oh, yeah. It's, it's, it's a while. It's like 10 or 20 of, seconds. But yeah. then you start jacking up the oxytocin. And oh, you yeah. get high off of hugs. Okay. So when fucking uh, Lord Fauci tells you not to hug your grandma and don't go six feet within people, tell that fucking Keebler elf to go back in a tree and bake some cookies and shit because you should be <laughs> hugging people. Don't be spitting in people's mouths. Yeah. And if you're sick, stay home. But here's the thing. When you do go out, hug people. Or trees. Smile at people. Hug a tree. You'll see there's a connection there as well. Living being. All right? That's the thing. Okay? So oxytocin, pituitary gland, love hormone, utilize it. It's good for you. Dopamine this is a big one, Ooh. all right? Dopamine. Dope dealers. It, this is I'm the dopamine dealer, okay? Um, that's your pleasure reward system. That's that rush of joy when you do something good, all right? That's God telling you you're on the right path. Maybe. <laughs> Perhaps, okay? Perhaps. So that's a rush of joy when you succeed at a task or a goal, okay? When you set a goal and you complete it, that shit feels good. When you finish your task or to-do list for the day, that shit feels good. Yeah, so it's that reward or, or reward neurotransmitter that really um, creates a pathway. We talk about brain you create pathways, so it's that... Think of like the Pavlovian response, right? You yeah. think of like I do a stimulus and stimulus I get a response, response right? right? So the same thing. That's why it can be really, you know, checking the two to-do lists when you just check someone off. You're like, oh yeah, feels good. That feels very nice. Feels good. Not but it's like that. But that's how you can use it productively if you're aware of it, right? The inverse of too much of dopamine is getting addicted, right? Addicted to patterns, behaviors unconsciously because you need that response, you need that pleasure response. So yeah, that's, that's habits your... and addictions will get carried away with the dopamine. But that's the thing. That's why some people that are depressed and low on dopamine and that are sluggish and have mental fatigue and low motivation and low libido and stuff, you need goals and tasks. Yeah. That's why it's good to write things no, down. No, it's super nice. It gets, it gets demonized because of the the addiction and people think it's just the Well, that's the thing. Dopamine. The powers drug, that be. Drug is used, or, you know, the corporations dopamine, right? so. and people that are aware of these reward systems have hijacked them. So drugs, video games, porn, shopping, social media. Super scroll, the infinite scroll. Oh, dude, when you're just pill popping and scroll, and Infinity scroll. Then you get too much dopamine and you get desensitized to it. Yeah. Okay. And now you need it to feel any sort of pleasure. Not only that, but you need more of it. So it's now it's enough. more drugs, longer time playing video games, wilder porn rabbit holes you get into, and then you need fucking three three German shepherds humping a nun just to get a yeah. semi chub you going. Gotta pay for therapy after that Dude, one. Dude, not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Same thing with fucking shopping. You just keep adding more to your closets full. Because it felt good to more. add to cart, yeah. didn't feel as good when the box came, didn't feel as good huh. when you put it on, and then you never wore it anyway, and you threw them in the fucking closet. So you didn't really want it. You just liked the feeling of... Boom. You didn't want it. the thing. You wanted the dopamine. The reward. Hit. So here's the thing with social media, and I was just telling you, on Saturday, I did a little social media fasting, just technology fasting, because I, I did a little float tank journey. Ooh. So I turned off the phone at like noon on Saturday, and then go back into the um, the matrix of social media Get until the, the Instagram matrix until like 9 a.m. on Sunday. Um, dude, it was like a cigarette craving. <sighs> yeah. Not for a specific thing or a Just specific person. It was like fear of missing out a little bit. Like, oh, what if I miss a good meme? <laughs> idea. <laughs> Something super the People need trivial. the memes. Yeah. Right. But, but, right. But then I detach from it and I breathe and I'm yeah. like, oh, shit, I am aware now Whoa. because I separated from it. Because like I was saying, I always am grateful that I didn't start Instagram until I learned a lot of things and went Same, through a lot yeah. of things. Because if they handed me a phone when I was 12, I would be completely fucking done deal. And yeah. I get it. 
So I always had the awareness of I'm not addicted because I'm aware that it's addictive and it's a game within the game and it's set up to be addicting. Yeah. So me going in with that knowledge knows to be fucking careful when you're playing with fire and yeah. I'm being aware. That every time I would be on too much and feeling addictive, my ego would be like, no, it's fine. You're building your business. You're helping people. Justification. Ah, ah, yeah. That's the best righteousness. Here's yeah. an excuse. Fucking run with it. Go, go, go. Then I'm like, okay, so let me see. This is because this is how you train your puppy. That is your ego. I go, okay, maybe you're right, maybe you're wrong. We're gonna see if we take your toy away, how you how the puppy reacts. <laughs> are you do you love the toy or are you addicted to the exactly. toy? Exactly. Okay, so let's take your toy away for less than 24 hours, 12 hours, whatever the fuck it was, right? 16 hours or something. And uh, the puppy got angry. The puppy, puppy was like, I, I want to see the little heart light up. Not like, ooh. Ooh. And I'm not even in it for the likes. It, it was like a little bit above that because I'm not somebody that's like posting a picture of me with my butt out or no shirt on or something well, that wants to see how many start. number of likes. No, but that's the thing. The <laughs> likes don't do anything for me. It's the fucking, it was the social interaction. Just that, yeah. Of like, maybe I would oh, say something funny. Oh, wait. Or maybe I would help somebody with something. Or maybe I would... <laughs> la, 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 la. Yeah. But like I said, it was more... If it, all that is is all ego, too. It was more like fear of missing out, which is a whole mm, other construct. Yeah. Of like, maybe there's a big post on it. Like, there's, there's no rationale to yeah. it. Well, and if, there's no could, logic. Yeah, there could be like any bazillion number of reasons, but if you just break it down to just right. like, oh, what's happening what chemically and back. logically right. and right, even just... And then the brain was like, you need that dopamine, you need that mm. dopamine. It literally felt like... When I stopped smoking cigarettes, your yeah. brain was just like, you're bored. Open up a tab of I porn and light up cigarettes. I know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Ooh, we can get there quick. Yeah. We can get there know, to the short. I know now, listen, you could exercise, meditate, go run, sit out in the sun, set up a to-do list and, and achieve some work goals. Or, or you could snort something, smoke something, <laughs> pop open a tab, <laughs> fucking scroll. See, uh, yeah, mindlessly. So that's the thing. It's not that dopamine's bad. It's not that social media is bad. It's zoom out and become aware, aware. that these are set up to be addictive. Yeah. So now they're that you're set to take advantage of your neurotransmitters. Right? Literally. They know this. They've admitted this. Like you've seen the social dilemma. Yeah. They're like, we know how your brain chemistry works. And we're gonna fuck with it. We're gonna fuck with it. We have For money. <laughs> I was gonna say chemists, which they might as well be chemists, programmers that yeah. understand. We're funneling you to not only stay on longer, but to give you exactly that little drip, the little heroin. Just enough. You don't want to give the whole thing. Drip. That's the thing, because you need more. It's like more, how more, Apple more. is like. People blow my minds when they're like <laughs> obsessed with the new Apple like updates or any kind of. I'm not. Just, I'm picking on iPhones because it's such a big thing. It's mm -hmm. like we added. A dark mode. They're like, oh my god, that's amazing. I don't, like, that you don't think they thought like, of that like ten years ago, and they just been slow did. dripping it to you. Of course like, they did. Like, I was listening to, I forget what podcast or something like that, but the iPhone didn't even have a copy and paste option, the first one. No, the first one was... was I never had the first one. Oh, dude, I had the first one. first iPhone I had was like iPhone 5, I think. Oh, wow, dude, I had... The, I 2008, waited in line at the mall for the first one because <laughs> six months before it came out, a buddy of mine worked at Apple. And I, I saw the commercial once, and I fruit said company. something to him. <laughs> and I go, how the fuck is this fruit company going to make a phone? Like, my brain couldn't understand yeah. how a computer and a phone were going to be the same thing. That's how fucking old I am. I couldn't make the connection of how the fuck I'm like a phone. Why does it look like an iPod, but it's a phone? Like I don't understand yeah. why someone would want to do more than phone calls on a phone. Yeah. Because back then you didn't even text message. You had the snake if you were taking a shit. Maybe the snake game. Yeah. You know what's or snake? I well I had um I'd be like some Androids and I also had a BlackBerry at one point. So with the oh yeah, brick breaker and stuff like okay. that. Okay. So right, right, but basic games. Yeah. Right. So my brain couldn't compute or comprehend. Why there could be a computer and a phone or why somebody would like that. So my negativity, I'm like, oh, this is bullshit. He pulls it out of his pocket six months before it comes. He goes, dude, this is going to change the world. Right? Uh, Which side bridge is where I shoulda, coulda, woulda bought Apple stock uh, and we'd be on a fucking yacht right now. Uh, but that goes into the long list of coulda, shoulda, wouldas in my life. <laughs> but now we're not doing that because we're creating our own future and our own reality. He takes it out of his pocket, turns it sideways and goes touch screen like Star Trek. Brrr, like and Star spins Trek. across <laughs> all his albums of fucking CDs are on yeah. there and MP3s and he's spinning through with touchscreen he turns it the screen turns I was his like what the exploding. fuck kind of Star Trek shit is this, this? that's fucking 2001 A Space Out to see the fucking big the, uh, the obelisk that lands in the looks just like an iPhone dude it was my brain it was like when the Native Americans saw the ships 
And their brain clouds are moving just dude, like their brain couldn't sails. compute. They were like, I don't even see the ships. Like, there's just well, white people. That video of like a drone fl- uh, flying over that like place yeah, in the Amazon. They're like throwing spears at it. Yeah, because they're like, that's I don't a know what that is. I don't like it. Right. That's why. That's what my brain said. Yeah. I don't know what that is. I don't like it. <laughs> Mama said that's a devil. Fear, ignorance. Yeah. <laughs> you talking? To, you talking to the wind? <laughs> <laughs> just, oh, that got me laughing. Mama, Mama, Vicky Valancourt asked Vicky um, Valancourt. Uh, <laughs> what my birth time was. She goes, you're not hanging out with those devil worshiping girls, are you? <laughs> <laughs> no, Mama. Foosball's not the de- the tarot is not the devil, Mama. <laughs> Mama, she just wants to look at my birth chart. Mama. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so dopamine. What a boy. It's not. It's not bad for you. But become aware that they, the powers that be, capitalism, corporations, whatever, big tech, big pharma, which is a whole other fucking thing, has hijacked, and narcotic street drugs as well, have can hijack your dopamine and re- pleasure and reward system if you do too much. Yeah, so instead of letting a programmer program you, you program yourself. Program yourself. Create your own future. Make your own decisions consciously instead of going with the herd and letting the TV and society dictate what you do. And next thing you know, you're yeah. knee deep in the muck, not knowing why you got there. Now you got to heal it's yourself. Hard to get out, no. Dude, and then you got to dig yourself out and heal yourself and make amends and apologize to everybody starting oh, with yourself. Oh, it's like that, like that, uh, mm-hmm. that phrase, that expression, like dig yourself out of a hole. Like, how do, you do, how, do you do, how do you do that? <laughs> I guess you made the hole and then filled it in, and now you're like buried alive. I always thought like you're in a ditch. Like how is digging? Digging's just gonna take more take soil you away more, from the bottom. More in, so unless you're using it to make like a little like ladder steps on the side. Yeah, oh, I like that. Pile up the dirt to climb out of. You need hole. a very particular type of soil clay combination there, but it's possible. It's possible, but you definitely don't want to. <laughs> this keep is what digging. I think about. You definitely don't want to keep digging, <laughs> right? 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 This is what keeps. This is why I need more dopamine. <laughs> this is what keeps you up at night. All right. So then the big grand finale Kahuna? is serotonin, the happiness okay? hormone. Happiness. So that's the difference between instant gratification, burst of pleasure from dopamine, and long-term sustainable happiness is serotonin. Okay. When we were talking about acetylcholine goes from nervous system to muscle serotonin is made in the gut okay the entire gut mostly the small intestine yeah okay so this <laughs> this is why when doctors start throwing pills at you for depression and they don't ask you if you exercise sleep or most importantly if you're eating right if serotonin is made in the gut almost all of it's made in the gut and you're throwing pills at somebody. And the brain has the second largest concentration of nerve cells in the body besides the brain. Without asking what they're eating, how are you healing somebody? You're not really. So this is the thing. SSRIs are selective serotonin re-up in, uh, inhibitors, yeah. right? So it's going to fucking... It tries to balance you out. It's, it's kind of like it's it's trying to attack the, at, a diff- at the wrong point, right? Instead of going to the origin yeah. and fixing that, we're just like... It's like cutting off a head of a hydra. You just got to keep taking pills to keep chopping off heads to keep it at bay. But we don't want to keep it at bay. We just want to kill the fucking thing, right? I don't like it. Um, I and don't so, like yeah, it. what SSRIs do essentially is the so reuptake inhi- inhibition is right. what. So serotonin gets released by neurotransmitters. So yes. It's free in the space of the synapse, right? Yes. We do whatever, right? So reuptake happens when the body gets signaled. There's a, a certain amount, the polarities. Where the other neurons unable to pick it up. Yeah, so the inhibition is just blocking it. So more serotonin stays free in the brain. But we already know, like we just said, that most of it's in the gut. So now we're using the least amount of serotonin to affect happiness when we can use the most through diet. It costs you a lot less, save you a lot of pills and side effects. Or unknown side effects because it's still relatively new, right? Super new and super ineffective, okay? Um, once again, we are not doctors. We're not telling you to flush your pills down the toilet. What we are telling you is if the doctor has you on there forever and he's not talking about exercise, sleep, uh, external factors, the, uh, you seeing a therapist and other uh, healers methods. and alternative not primary methods, primary methods, methods of healing, of healing uh, and most importantly, nutrition, then – He's just a drug dealer at that point. If he gives it to you because you're in a really, really bad place and he says, fix your diet, see a professional, but see here's a this for now. but here's this for now to helps. balance you, see if it helps. But our plan is to, as soon as possible, get your gut and brain healthy, working together, making your own serotonin yeah. so we can pull you off the pills. And that's why, you know, the, so like that's why the gut biome is such a big deal now because it's not only does it for digestive stuff, right? Huge. Huge for the brain. The brain, the gut, like I said, gut... It's called the second brain a lot of times because it has the second most dense amount of nerve cells in the body, right? 
um, are in your gut. That's why when you get nervous, you get butterflies in your where? Your tum tum. In the old gut. In your gut, right? And people that study the gut microbiome would call it the first brain. That's right. That's your this brain came after this digestive brain, right? Sounds important um, to me. And for some All people, right. it is their first brain. You know, like that. <laughs> <laughs> for real, that's leads, what I do leads, my thinking. Leads the way, right? That's what um, I do my thinking. Gut feeling. That's why I say go with your gut. Come on now. Come on, guys. But um, it's all there in the language. But yeah, gut, the gut bacteria, healthy gut bacteria. There's a bajillion bacteria. So I'm not gonna go through all these, but yeah, healthy trillions. gut bacteria release metabolites um, that stimulate serotonin response, right? Yeah. So there's actually like a cyclical exchange here. So the more serotonins, you know, the more the healthier my gut is, that's healthier my brain's oh. gonna be by serotonin, right? That's why they say for hap, for depression, anxiety, all this stuff, stress, inflammation, Alzheimer's, all this stuff. Fix your diet and see how that helps. Fix your gut microbiome and see how that helps. Gut health is brain health. And then vice versa, right? And when they say if you have digestive issues like Ah. Crohn's disease, irritable bowel syndrome, reduce your stress and see how that affects your digestive system. Guys, everything is connected. Get it together. All right? So serotonin, mood, well-being uh, works in um, antagonistic relationship with melatonin, right? So you want melatonin secreted at night for you to fall asleep some serotonin in the morning to get you going and feeling good because when i was depressed um serotonin was low and the morning was the worst time for me i did not want to get out of bed whatsoever i wanted to stay in bed and cry and die okay and and obviously regulates appetite as well since um it has so much to do with the gut so if you're low on serotonin you're worrying all the time you got anxiety you got ocd sometimes sweet and salty cravings you lack confidence you're depressed so let's say this again worrying anxiety obsessive compulsive lack of confidence depression if you have these symptoms and you're not working on your diet you're like, fucking up like you said at the very beginning right all this stuff is external stimulation, stimulating the drugs that are these neurotransmitters inside of me, yeah. all right? So if you fix this to be aware, for one, become aware of this, accept what you're doing, what you're doing to your body, what the external stimulus is doing to your body, and then make your body, program your body to be aware of what's being stimulated, right? So be aware of your social media when you're taking that cigarette of a like button or something like yeah. that, or... And it all goes back to taking personal responsibility for PR, your health. Baby, if you think PR, baby, Personal responsibility. My health is my responsibility. All right. This is, you ever seen Dr. Ray, the chiropractor? Which one is he? Dude, black dude shredded no, like a I motherfucker. Oh, dude. On Instagram. Nicest fucking guy yeah. ever. This is his shirt. It's oh, I dig it. Dude, shredded, tells it how it is. Chiropractor saving lives. It out is there. how they say it. He is. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and diet, okay? Nutrition. So we say diet because it's lifestyle and nutrition. Yeah. All right. And that's going to help you with mental stuff, okay? Is the end-all, be-all? No. There's other tools to be done. But all the tools in the world with a shitty diet are never going to help you. That is the foundation and it starts there. And this is interesting uh, that I looked up too with serotonin. If you smell food that's rotten, that feeling that you get, like, ew, I don't want to eat that or whatever. When you smell it, that's your serotonin dropping. It yeah. says, don't put that in my sp- if stomach. You, if you do eat something that's toxic or uh, that do you Body doesn't like serotonin actually stimulates your body to push it out of the body. Yeah, sure does. So now it's the next thing you know, you're puking and you've got the runs. Purge. Been there. Not as fun as eating healthy. This is true. I tell you what. I tell you what. So, neurotransmitters. That's the big seven. There's over hundreds of them. These are the seven that you're working with every day. You can supplement them, but guess what? Better to get it through diet and healthy movement, and most importantly, healthy lifestyle practices. When you're living your true authentic self and you're taking steps towards your purpose and accomplishing goals and having confidence and looking fear in the face and over uh, overcoming it with courageousness and authenticity, then you're winning. And that's how you balance your neurotransmitters. And we'll be back on Wednesday with hormones, which Ooh. are all the way to feel stuff. Feeling things. Feeling good. Feeling things feels weird. You got a nervous system. You got glands. You got chakras. The rest is just tissue, meat, and bones. Kleenex. The rest is meat and bones, baby. That's all it is. You are a love and light being, and this is how we feel feelings in this human experience. And we will see you guys next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.